How's it going? So I'm out in the garage doing some other videos about some other stuff and I just thought I would do a quick follow-up video uh, to the one that I made about a million years ago regarding making wheel discs and stuff just to talk about them a bit because that part that um, video series gets reposted quite a lot and people always ask the same questions about you know what it's like to ride with them and shit and i thought well you know now's pretty i've got one of these wheels that's filled in right here why not talk about them a bit and maybe answer some of the questions that come up from the other video so to talk you through it in case i missed anything in that original video i don't think i did but i'll talk you through making them again this is not a how-to this is how i do it I don't recommend you do it this ever. You'll obviously be killed or something. Uh, just as a disclaimer, don't go and do this, it's dreadful. Um, but what I've been doing, I've always ridden with uh, wheel discs on. And uh, what I do is, as per the other video, measure the diameter of the wheel, measure the inner diameter. Now this is important because this is usually different on one side to the other. So on this one we've got a brake disc. Now look at the centre, look at the centre as I turn this around. This side real small, this side if you can see that much bigger much much bigger so you can't just make one disc copy it and stick it on the other side so measure that measure the the inner you can uh, and if you want to save time and make it easier for yourself make them out of cardboard first get it all cut so it fits perfectly and then use that as a template uh, so i've measured both sides i've cut the circles out and that looks fine uh, the next thing i do is work out where the valve is and cut a hole uh, on this one it's pretty neat on the other ones i've just taken the grinder and cut it any old out um, yeah do that on both sides i normally do because it's funny how the different sides of the bike can make things easier or harder to uh, to access so i do that on both sides so you've got your two wheel discs the next thing you're going to want to do is work out where these bolts go through or should i say the next thing i would do you're not going to do this you're not that stupid um but the next thing i would do is look for the spokes on the wheel and see if there's a high point anywhere so the way i do that is to hold up one of these discs and while there's nothing on the other side look through and see which part of the spokes this is touching up against that will vary from wheel to wheel in my experience and wherever it's tightest i put the i drill a hole next to that spoke I don't drill them through the spoke. I don't know why anybody would. I don't, I wouldn't recommend that. Surely that's a shitty idea, but I have heard of people doing it. Um, so I drill it next to that spoke. Then when I've got them all mapped out, nice and square, nice and even, 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 even. <laughs> Fuck. I am winging this, you know. Um, yeah, then I get the other disc, put them together, sandwich them up with some clamps, and drill. use the holes you've just drilled in this one to drill through the other one so they line up perfectly. Then I stick them on the wheel and put the bolts through using a lock nut to tighten them up. I don't go stupid with tightening, but I make sure they're f good and firm. You don't want to be able to slide this disc around. Uh, and it's also worth checking, after I've done a few miles, I like to check to see if it is working loose, because I have had that despite what, uh, what my best efforts. So that's the next thing that I do, and that's them on and fitted. I think that's around about it. Have I missed anything? Is there anything else you want to know with that? I think that's it. Um, so this is a wheel that I, f I filled in years ago, did a few tours on it, and as you can see, it's fitted with, uh, how many, two, four, six, seven bolt fitment on this one. Sometimes I only use three, made sense to use seven on this. I'm guessing that's probably where the spokes are inside the wheel or something. Um, so what what questions do i normally get so the, the first one would be what do you make this stuff out of? what do you make them out of so this one is composite uh currently road signs in the uk are made from this composite stuff so it's like a uh, uh, half mil thick aluminium uh, and then in the middle is plastic which is about five uh, four mil thick and then there's aluminium on the other side uh, don't i don't mind working with this it's actually pretty easy to cut it's easier to cut than aluminium is obviously i've legally obtained these and you shouldn't go out nicking local road signs 
No matter how scummy and corrupt your council is, don't go out nicking stuff from them. So this is what we've got on this one. I have used a, a bunch of different materials and I see a lot of different stuff getting recommended. Um, so I've used, what have I used? I've used plywood um, because I always wanted to do this shit for free. You know, I wasn't going to go out and, and spend money on stuff. So back in the day before I was purchasing stuff legally, um, I would go out and, and scavenge whatever I could. And I've used plywood. Plywood was shit. Um, it was all right for a little while, looked okay, but then it would always start falling apart. So even like the, the weather resistance, whatever it is, plywood, uh, that would always fall apart. I've used uh, steel. That was a bitch to cut. It actually fitted all right, but it was a bastard to cut. Um, I've used aluminium sheet. That's probably the most popular one could always get aluminium sheet probably about three three and a half millimeters thick uh, use that loads use that on tons of wheels that just sort of went out of fashion and I could get this stuff more easily in the end uh, but I used a lot of that and it worked really well I've used for sale sign boards now these might differ depending on what the hell country you're in um, but here in the UK they're made of sort of they're made of plastic uh, which is which is uh, like um Ah, oh, Christ, how do you describe for sale signs? Um, well, whatever, they're made of plastic and they're sort of open cell type things. Shit, I don't know how to describe this stuff. Um, it might be the same everywhere. Uh, they were shit um, because when you put them on, I want to be able to tighten them up quite tightly to make sure it's a good firm fit and it's not going anywhere. And the minute you do that with those, it, it really, so they, they bend and go out of shape and they look shit and the paint doesn't stick to them all that well because they're flexible. Uh, so they were shitty. And I've also seen, you always get guys that recommend using, well, particularly in the UK, using dustbin lids from metal dustbins the round metal dustbins. Now that probably works pretty great if you live in the 1980s or some shit, um, but I've never seen those anywhere and I don't really want to go on eBay and f buy four full dustbins to then cut the lids out. The other thing I don't want is the lids on those are like a cone shape, really don't want any of that going on, I want them flat. These are the discs I fit, always flat, never tapered. Um, and yeah, there is one more. People have recommended that if you go to Speedway, which is where you see the guys uh, racing motorbikes around an oval and they're always sliding sideways, they buy these for their bikes and they make them for bikes. Uh, you know, you go to a Speedway retailer and you can actually buy wheel discs. Again, they're too expensive for me. I'd rather make something um, and I'd rather make it. You know, forget how much it is. I'd still rather make it myself. Uh, so I've never used those either. I also get asked, uh, what's it like to ride with them in? Fuck. <laughs> and you see, you see people go, what's it like to ride with them in? And it's like, man, I don't know you. I don't know your bike. I don't know where you live. Is it windy where you live? I, I just don't know. So I'll, I, there's no easy way of answering that. And when people reply going, it'll do this or it'll do that, you can pretty much ignore that because you, it's all very subjective. In my opinion, it's subjective and it depends where you are. Really depends what bike you ride. So the first thing I would say is, um, will you get buffeted around a bit more by, by side winds? Yeah. Yeah, you are going to get pushed around a little bit more. And um, the other weird thing is that you'll get pushed and it'll be a different feeling, I, I think. Now, this is hard for me to answer because I've ridden with filled in discs for the last dozen years. And that's a shit way to quantify how much you've been riding because I know guys that ride five miles a year. Uh, we ride probably around 15,000 miles a year. And I've been riding with these in for the last dozen years or so. Um, it will put, I'm totally used to it as well. Once you get used to it, it's kind of, you don't notice it. Um, but as a first time on it, I would say that you will notice you're getting pushed. You'll notice you're getting pushed from the bottom of the bike rather than, you don't realise this, but you normally get pushed where the body of the bike is and where you, your body is. The wind can, has got something it can push against. Whereas when these are on, it'll push you lower down. Uh, which can be a slightly different feeling. 
Um, following behind lorries, there's a point where behind a big ass lorry, the wind comes down the side of the lorry and converges behind it. I forget the name of that. It's like a wake that you get behind a boat. And if you're in that, you'll notice that you get shoved around a little bit more than usual. Uh, overtaking lorries. So if there's a huge bad side wind uh, and you're overtaking a lorry and it's protecting you from the wind, when you break its sort of bow wave, you'll get hit more. Uh, again, no, I've never had a problem with that. I got used to it and you just like brace yourself. And, yeah, you know it's coming. Um, where do you live? Is it windy where you live? Is it super windy? Do you live somewhere that's super flat? If you live in the middle of a fucking forest, you're not going to notice half of these things like somebody that lives in the middle of nowhere. Here, Lincolnshire in England, super flat. And I used to visit my parents there. Uh, and riding out there, the wind has nothing to slow it down except for you. <laughs> so you feel the wind a lot more. Bike size, fucking bike size and weight. Nobody, when they're giving out advice about these things, they don't talk shit about bike size. It's so important, in my opinion. So if you've got a really light bike with huge wheels, like a 125 motocross bike, and it's running a 21, this is a 19, some of those run, in, run 21 inch front wheels. So if you've got a 21 inch front, you've got an 18 rear, you filled them both in, your bike and you weigh a grand total of fuck all, the wind is gonna push you around more than if you're on some big heavy ass, old ass bike with smaller wheels. So I had a uh, DR350, Suzuki DR350. It was running at the time a 21 front, and I think it was an 18 rear, now we're on about it. Uh, and that would get pushed around quite a bit. Now, when I got on my CBR1000, old school steel frame, you know, pig iron CBR1000, it had 17 inch wheels and the difference was night and day. That thing, I mean, the wind couldn't push that around if you had a fucking fence panel nailed to the side of it. Um, so very, very different depending on where you live, what bike you ride. Um, yeah, there, there is one situation where it does catch me off guard every now and then, and it's very particular. And to me, it hasn't happened often enough to be worth considering, or worth considering getting rid of these things. Uh, and that is, if you've got a gusty, not consistent, a gusty sidewind, so it's like pushing nothing, then pushing again and nothing, buffeting gusty sidewinds. Say they're coming from the right, uh, from your right hand side as you're riding along and you go into a sweeping bend that's going to the right. Now what happens there is your the bike obviously leans over so the wheel's leaning towards the wind, the wind's coming in from this side and as you're leaning I swear, now this might be subjective, it might be my imagination, but the wind hits the wheel from that side and sort of lifts it ever so slightly and you get less traction and it's it's never led me into any particular bad situations but boy is it unnerving especially the first time it happened and I wasn't expecting it again I've been doing this so long that I will not even have to think I'm going into that situation my body and my mind is already like I've done this a thousand million times before I know what to be ready for um, but the first time I did it and it caught me I thought I'd hit um, I don't know a patch of gravel or something but not quite it's weird it's really weird and unnerving that first time um, is there anything else you want to know I can't remember anything else why do I fit them cosmetics Cosmetics, fucking hate the look of spoke wheels. Don't like any spokes that's out there. Uh, really don't. Other than probably, probably the old GT 550s. I like those. I quite like some of them, but I, I've not had those wheels on anything, so I don't really want to show them off. But I like this look, and it is cosmetic and it is vanity, to be quite honest. And I think that's it. I think that's it. I can't remember anything else that gets asked, but hopefully that was helpful. It's only been like 12 years since I did the last video. So if you were waiting for this all that time, then I hope it answered some of your questions. And uh, yeah, good luck if you, well, you wouldn't go and make these. That's just ridiculous.